I have apparently no intentions of getting fully dressed today. I'm just sitting here in my bathroom. <laughs> I've done my makeup twice today and this is the one that turned out a lot better. And this is like the box of new stuff that I got from Surratt and also <laughs> a bunch of these that just came in the mail from Victoria Beckham Beauty. Mm, screaming internally, screaming externally. So while I had this fabulous face of makeup on, I figured we would film a little will I buy it moment because the Sephora sale is coming up. And so I am starting to build my wish list, build my cart out. And there's just, I don't know, stuff kind of like flying under the radar for me right now. I will admit, this is the first time in a while on my channel where like I am way more interested in makeup that's already been out for a long time. I'm kind of firmly in this over 30 like makeup cohort at this point where I'm far more interested in talking about like textures that work and stuff that's worth my money than necessarily like getting it up for every single new release. I mean, obviously that has its exceptions. There are brands that I'm pretty much gonna keep my eye out for, no matter what, like that I'm checking for, you know? I'm checking for House Labs. I'm checking for Makeup by Mario. I'm checking for, I don't freaking know, like Victoria Beckham, you know? But other than that, like, there are so many things that used to be kind of on the fence for me and now it's just like, I give them this like blanket, like it just doesn't apply to me, you know, because I'm just not interested in seeing if that's gonna be some kind of like hidden gem. I'm like, no, I'd rather go with what I know works and that I know I'm gonna get excited about because there's so much good makeup on the market now, you know? It's like, oh, it's another of this. Like I already have the best version of this, so. Maybe I'm gonna become some kind of minimalist or something, not really, but like, you know, uh, a person who likes to shop their stash a little bit more. Because I do, I feel like a lot of the stuff that is meant for the skin that I am growing into has been around for a long time. And it's like, I'm learning about it. It's not being like presented to me as something new. So anyway, we're gonna open up Trend Mood and we're gonna talk about some new makeup and I'm probably going to not want a lot of it, but that's going to make the ones that I do want that much more exciting. So let's see, let's just find out. All right, so the day that I'm filming this is March 28th, it's Tuesday. And we have a very low res <laughs> picture <laughs> of the new ColourPop Shadow Sticks. They have changed the formula. Super creamy, pigmented, multitasking eyeshadow sticks glide on effortlessly with high impact, long lasting color. The brand has perfected the formula for a creamier, blendable finish, including a bigger tip for an effortless application, <laughs> I'm 12, with a built-in sharpener at the bottom to create the most precise tip. I hate that. I hate that. I'm sorry. A shadow, a shadow stick does not need a sharpener. I know that a lot of them have them. Have I ever used one? Never in my life. All they do is fall out and rickety rack around inside of your makeup collection and we just don't need that in the landfills, okay? Like, let's work towards more sustainable packaging. We don't need little sharpeners on the bottom of everything. It's not a luxury move. Includes 16 shades, $7 each, $21 for a bundle. I'm guessing of three, which is not a deal, it's just math, and full collection is $99. I feel like ColourPop has done a really good job in their own right of staying in the same age group and not following their cohort kind of as they age. Whereas like, you know, Glossier has really tried to like mature with the millennials and they're like, oh, okay, well, what are millennials wanting to do now that they're like, you know, in their mid to late thirties and stuff like that in some cases. Like ColourPop is just color popping. You know what I mean? They're just, they're on that ColourPop train. They're just gonna keep on color popping. And so I feel like, you know, they're hoping that like new people graduate into like a ColourPop generation, you know, and they're just like, oh, what is this? I'm excited about this. And you know, they can kind of keep tweaking their formulas and stuff, but they're gonna, they're gonna stick with the ColourPop vibe. I am not trying to make this about age necessarily. I just think that like they specifically aren't targeting me with this. I love a good shadow stick. I do. I'm wearing shadow sticks right now. And by the way, I mean, oh boy. I'm going to be doing probably a full video just dedicated to the Victoria Beckham color sticks or what are they called? The eyewear. But yeah, I mean, you all know me. I am an unabashed snob and I can't even really account for it. I, these might be fine, but again, there are so many of these on the market. We've got the original Laura Mercier caviar sticks. We've got these new Victoria Beckham ones. We've got, I mean, I tried one from, gosh, It Cosmetics that was kind of fantastic. The Thrive Cosmetics ones, some I like better than others. The Bobbi Brown ones are amazing and they come in a menagerie of gorgeous shades. So, you know, did the industry need this? Maybe from an affordability standpoint, from an accessibility standpoint, you wanna get excited about it, you get excited about it, but like, 
I, ColourPop doesn't need my money and they don't need my endorsement. Terra 28, this one hurts a little bit, okay? Because, and I mean, absolutely no shade, not any actual real shade. It's just that like when I, ta I spoke to Amy months and months and months ago and they were just, I don't know if they still are, but they've been really inconsistent with PR and like, I don't want to be that creator that feels entitled to PR, but you don't want two of something. And so if a brand tends to send you PR, you will wait for the PR instead of buying something, even if you're excited about it, because you don't want to have two. I'm hardly going to work my way through one. I don't need two of something. You know what I mean? And so I didn't buy the Tower 28 Mauve collection when it came out, even though it has my name written on it. It might as well. You know, they came out with a lip gloss and a blush and she said she was gonna send it to me. She said she was gonna send it to me and something got lost in the mail. And so maybe I'll just pick it up at the Sephora sale. It's not expensive. That's not the point. The point is I didn't wanna have two and I've just been kind of waiting, you know? But I'm also not gonna be that jerk who's like literally like bugging somebody for my PR. Like, um, hello, I was supposed to get some free makeup. I was promised a gift. Like, no, I'm not gonna be that person. So I'll probably just end up buying it because I really wanna try it. Like, it's a really pretty color. Elf is doing a what elf is doing a collab because we needed a collab with American Eagle oh lord in heaven I y'all I'm so trying not to make this about age but like I already did American Eagle okay <laughs> American Eagle looks exactly the same as it did when I was in high school right now and I already did it I'm good and like honestly I'm a little traumatized by everything being covered in denim again all of a sudden. Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? <laughs> Just when I think we've transcended something as a society. I am not anti-denim. I love denim. I don't want denim on my makeup. <laughs> I don't want denim on my makeup. I don't want denim on my makeup. Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Tinted Lip Oils. Cute! I sound like Kylie Jenner. Cute! Yeah, inspired by the soft pinch liquid blush. Okay, okay, got it. They're even in like tall package versions of it. So like, this is an example, a subtle example, cause I don't think that Rare Beauty is like suffering right now. Okay, like they, they're getting great attention for great formulas. I don't think that like they need a, to gimmick us into buying something, but you ride the coattails of something that's working, okay? And that soft pinch liquid blush has gone viral on TikTok so many times over. TikTok, maybe God rest her soul. And I just think that it's kind of smart to call it that, but I'm interested to see if it's as pigmented as those are, because that's what they're notorious for, right? Is just being so pigmented that like you hardly have to use any of them. So it says, inspired by the soft pinch liquid blush, they wanted to create a lip product that could create the same flush of color for lips that the liquid blush creates for cheeks. Lip color with a transformative texture. It goes on like a jelly. Ooh, love to hear that, but transforms into a hydrating formula. So I'm guessing maybe it's gonna be kind of like, cause they did put out liquid lip balms. I mean, they were lip glosses, but like liquid lip balm is sort of the definition of that formula that's slippy. Instead of being sticky and syrupy, it's slippy on the lips, but it's still glossy and bouncy. And I'm wondering if they just are exaggerating that unctuousness of that formula and putting more pigment in it. And that would be neat because A, I am always here for shine and gloss and, you know, slippy, lovely, easy to wear formulas. But also that formula, that formula, that collection, the, ooh, what was it called? Mm, I don't remember. That collection was the one that when I saw the PR package, this was before I was on the PR list, the PR package was this like circle where they were all, you know, put in like almost like a shape of a sun, right? And all the colors. And with the exception of nearly apricot, to my eye, they all looked to be pretty much the same colors, like nearly rose, nearly mauve, nearly nude, nearly berry. They were all so similar. Apricot was very appealing. I did not end up getting any of the apricot, but I like ordered some of it and I was shocked by like how I kept calling them the wrong colors because like it was really hard to tell them apart. Like it was really hard to tell like what was nearly nude and what was nearly rose and what was nearly mauve. Like it was just, it was odd. So I'm excited to see these because they look like they're going to be much more committed shades. Like they're going to be very distinct from one another. Nude mauve, cool pink, muted peach, warm rose, muted berry, rose brown, rose mauve, and nude brown. Those actually all sound like the same thing. So I suppose we will see together, won't we? But thank God I am on 
the Rare Beauty PR list now, so I'm thinking I'll be getting these in the mail. Although, I still have yet to receive an eyeshadow palette from them. And again, it's not that I can't go buy it, it's just that I don't really want to have two of the same one, and it's like, if it's gonna come, I'm just, I want to be patient, you know? But those eyeshadow palettes, they just keep getting more interesting, and I am interested in them. They're very, very cool looking, although I don't hear much about them, so I wonder if they're, like, underwhelming in person. Okay, this is one, and I have been kind of intermittently on Laura Mercier's PR list. Like, they've sent me stuff for the holidays, and I'll get stuff every once in a while, but it's not quite as, like, consistent, but also, they're not releasing things absolutely constantly, so it's kind of like bare minerals, where, I, like, when I get a package in the mail, I'm like, neat, cool, you know what I mean? I don't feel, like, necessarily, you know, entitled to it, because I don't feel like they are, again, putting things out at this, like, wild clip, you know, where it's like, oh, I have to be the first one to review this, you know? Because that's the whole point of PR, right, is that you get it in time for it to release, and be able to review it in time for release. It's not really the case anymore, and I'm still not a big enough, like, influencer for that to really be the case most of the time, but that was the idea of it. I did end up buying this, you know, for example. So I'm, like, not, I'm not, like, airtight getting every single release from Laura Mercier, but I did get the real flawless, weightless, perfecting foundation. And so far, so good. So anyway, this is a powder. This is the new Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. So I'm guessing it's kind of going with this. And I cannot help but look at this and think that looks like somewhere in between, and I know it's a powder, kind of hard to tell just by looking at it, but it looks like somewhere in between the Kosas, which is my <gasps> ride or die. Baby. I love her so much. Like I like I will put on other powders and then I'm just like, well, you know, it could really it could really use some cosas and it could always use some cosas because it's the best powder. It looks like a halfway between that and the Bite Beauty that we can't buy anymore. So, I will definitely be trying it so that I can report to y'all on it. Regardless, it's one of those I like I need to know. $48. A press finishing powder that enhances the look of skin and makeup with a natural luminous finish. Ooh, we love to hear it. Instantly adding dimension and enlivening skin, light coverage, radiant finish, $48, four shades. I'm here for it. I'm here for that so hard. What is that? What is that? And Hindash, why did you like it? Super Mario Brothers by Lush Cosmetics. Cause you're a nerd. Yeah, no, it's a bunch of bath <laughs> it's a bunch of bath bombs from Lush that are Mario themed. Am I the only person on this planet? Well, I should say the only vagina having person on this planet who would need to call 911 if I used a bath bomb? Like, I would get a UTI or a bacterial vaginosis or some crap so fast, so fast. How do people survive bath bombs? Absolutely not. No. Apparently someone can, but it's not me. It's not me. Oh, Lord in heaven. Oh, Lord in heaven. Annie Lawless, what are you out here doing, rootin' tootin'? New skin smoothing talc free perfecting powder from Lawless, ultra lightweight pressed multi use powder. Medium coverage provides smoothness, soft focus effect, and a soft matte natural finish. $39 in seven shades. This is, in and of itself, a good release. It is, okay? Seven shades. That's three more than the Laura Mercier we were just talking about. It's uh, $9 cheaper, right? Yeah, $9 cheaper than the Laura Mercier we were just talking about. And it's a, a clean formula and it's talc free and we love to see it. Here's the thing with me and Lawless, right? Because I did clean beauty through all of 2019 and Lawless was the brand that I think I got like the most excited about until I met Aether because I was like, oh my gosh, makeup that's actually like pigmented and like, you know, performs or whatever. Except that my entire perception was so skewed by like lousy, lousy, lousy makeup that came out of the clean beauty side of the industry for so long that I was like pleasantly surprised by something behaving even like drugstore, you know what I mean? And I would say that's what Lawless feels like. Lawless feels like drugstore makeup. It has kind of like a, not quite the finger on the pulse of what is happening at any given time. And I'm not saying every brand needs to be doing the same thing, but like Annie is making makeup for Annie, okay? <laughs> Annie's not gonna change her ways. She's gonna be wearing full coverage. She's going to be wearing every possible step in your routine from 2014. And she's gonna keep making makeup for that because Lawless is not Annie's main gig, okay? 
Girlfriend's got plenty of money coming in from multiple sources. She is very diversified. And when she puts something out, she's like, you know what? I'm gonna put out a powder because I want to use a powder and me and Andy just don't do our makeup the same and that's fine. Oh man, I wonder how Jacqueline Hill's doing. I just wonder how she's doing, you know what I mean? Last time I checked in on her, it wasn't good. I was watching her vlogs, I was like, this isn't good. I know this is good. I hope she's doing okay. She's putting out blushes. New plush blush blurring cheek tint collection of Never Tried Anything by Jacqueline Hill. To my knowledge, I don't think so. But it's not gonna start today. I'm not gonna start today. You know, I'm not gonna become a Jacqueline Hill stan account. I hope she's doing okay. Ah, it's that Guerlain denim thing again. God help me. I need eye bleach. Oh, what are we doing? Vacation. Vacation, all I ever wanted. This is the Super Spritz SPF 50. You know what? If vacation wants to start sending me PR, I'm gonna become a vacation stan. That's where I'm at on that. Like, I, am, I don't feel like going and spending my money on this, although, I think that, I think that, I think that we're way blown out. This is gonna be one of those videos where I just look like an ethereal angel. <laughs> Cause I don't feel like adjusting my ISO, okay? I think that they have the thing where they have like a candle that smells like tennis balls and like, tennis is one of my kinks. I just think it's hot. Like, I don't know. Like I always go to the US Open. I grew up playing tennis. Like Roger Federer, dudes in tall socks. Like, uh, what's his face? Oh, what's his face? Berrettini. Oh, Berrettini. Call me Berrettini. Whew. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm always here to rep on, on how sexy I think tennis is. So, you know, again, if, 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 if I get to try some of this stuff for free, you might see me become a stan. If y'all have like a certain product that you want me to try from vacation, I will. Again, it's not a money thing. It's just like a prioritization thing. <laughs> like, I'm just like, nah, there's just so much happening. But it is an SPF 50 for my face. Oh, what is this? Olaplex has decided to come out with a lash serum. Uh, no, 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 no. I had a sty, okay? And like, I have moved away from regular mascaras. I, because I apparently am still too much of a child to completely rinse them from my face. And then when I was having lunch in the city with Kelly and Ingrid and Nicolette, Kelly was like, yeah, have you ever used lash serums? Cause those give me styes. And I was like, and? Lifetime anti-hauled lash serums. Plus I did a video where, and this is probably like actually effective. I'm sure that it is. But I did a video where I tested the lash food lash serum versus castor oil for five months and saw no difference. So that's actually the top performing video on my entire channel because everybody's like, I need to know. I'll tell you, there was no difference. No more Sol de Janeiro. I can't, Sol de Janeiro. They can't, uh, they can't tempt me with those smells, man. I get KP just thinking about it. Plus it smells like curve for men. Like, you know, it's aqua de Giorgio blue or some crap. Like it just smells like some teenage boy. <laughs> Makes me want to wash my hands. What is this? Okay, okay. I think that we have crossed the uncanny valley on Dyson where the blow dryers are starting to look like vacuums, okay? <laughs> At what point, at what point are we gonna have like a, a hybrid? It's gonna be, they're gonna find a way to make a blow dryer vacuum, okay? Okay, Makeup by Mario has put out Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Color. So I said, I am always checking for Makeup by Mario because I just like, I like his ideas. I like his brain, but this is a not a particularly me. There are a couple of reasons. So this is, I'll read you what it is, full coverage. Water infused a liquid lip color that hydrates and visibly plumps with a weightless glossy feel in 13 shades, $24 each. I think that that's awesome. It's a great price for what it is and the colors are gorgeous. He really does understand how to make like very wearable colors for lots of skin tones. Two things, one, saturated lip color on me. It just isn't like I'm wearing clear gloss right now and I can almost never make an excuse to wear anything like more pigmented than, you know, one of the a balmy gloss things from Hourglass. And like, even then sometimes I'm like, it's too much. So we're, <laughs> I'm gonna tell an embarrassing story about Kelly. Kelly told me that she, uh, when we were having, we were having dinner and she said that she sometimes has to like dilute her fizzy water because it's like too, Fizzy. It's like too too much flavor, but like, do you know what I mean? It's like got that snap to it. And like me and Simbri earlier that day had just been talking about how like, I like using my soda stream because I can put as much snap in there as I want because I want it to literally like kick me in the teeth. She's like, if it doesn't come out through my nose, it's not fizzy enough. And so like Kelly saying that like cracked us up so much because it was just, it was so sweet and sincere. And 
that's how I feel about my lip colors. I'm like, it's got too much flavor. It's too spicy, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, I'd rather go back to clear, you know? So that's, um, that's my take and that's kind of personal. You know, I might end up buying like one, but I think at this point I should be on Makeup by Mark. I should be on Makeup by Mario's PR list. They emailed me about the Ethereal palette. I wonder if they emailed me this time. Makeup? They didn't email me this time, but man, I might reach out. I might reach out because like, to be honest, it's just a brand I want to be an authority on. But if I were to get any of them, it would probably be that like beigey nude. It looks like freaking coffee. It looks flipping awesome. But it's full coverage, which makes me think it's like a little bit more than like the Hourglass Unreal lip glosses, which are like, you know, about as high coverage as I would want to wear. But they do look plumping and gorgeous. But this is the other thing that irritates me about this. The laziness of these swatches being photoshopped. Ah, if you photoshop the colors, how do we know you didn't photoshop the formula? How do I know that's not just like some random crap you put on their lips? We got time? You got money? <gasps> ah! My girl, Angelica, Angie Nickvis, she is on trend mood because she is coming out with Singe Beauty, she's coming out with a line of brushes. I am so excited. I squealed when I saw it, and then I squealed again in the city when Kelly brought it up. I'm just so excited for her, and they look great. Like, Kelly and I just like waxed poetic for a while about how like not enough brands have really good precision brushes, and these are all small. And they're coming out, ooh, they came out three days ago? I'm gonna buy them. About them. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna support her on that if they're not already sold out because yeah, they look like great brushes, okay? that. Jill Stewart, y'all, okay. I am all here for a beautiful packaging situation. A beautiful package, if you will. Jill Stewart, I feel like is kind of gilding the lily a little bit to the point where I'm like, but is it good? If you're working that hard on the packaging, like, is the product good? know you know it's it kind of looks like they're going just like a little a little too hard on the, the bells and whistles and the smoke and mirrors plus I don't know exactly the context but I was listening to my friend Rachel Ellen Rose in one of her videos I was like blow drying my hair you know what I mean like I was not exactly catching every word but I'm pretty sure she mentioned that something from Jill Stewart had broken her out a lot and I'm just like I don't know I don't know <laughs> This brand kind of came out of nowhere for me. Y'all let me know, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, no, sure. Of course, someone named Rude Cosmetics is doing a collab with Mentos. Of course they are. Okay, this, I even commented on this because it's okay. We've got the new Goof Proof Brow Powder from Benefit Cosmetics. You know what? Like, sure, Benefit is an authority on brow products. They always have been, but I'm also very used to Benefit making some, you know, kind of over the top kind of filigreed packaging. It's not my taste, but that's what I'm used to. And this looks like the drugstore. Like I'm sure it's a fine product, but like Benefit's not inexpensive. They liked, I would, I'm actually quite interested to know how much this is. Let's find out, because I'm pretty sure it came out already. They don't have it, I guess it hasn't come out yet, because they have it listed at zero dollars right now. I have no idea what the status of this situation is, but yeah, we'll just keep an eyebrow out for that. I hate myself. What is, Diana, Shiseido has put out Seven Lights Powder Illuminator, a multifunction illuminating powder inspired by ancient Japanese beauty rituals. A combination of seven light reflecting pigments that adapt to any skin tone and type, improving its luminosity, providing freshness, vitality, and energy to the skin. It has a moisturizing formula that prevents the appearance of signs of dryness and or shine. Has a semi-matte natural finish with floral notes scent. You can use it as a blush, eyeshadows, or contouring. Qua? Like what in the what is that? They really said, oh, just all of the above. <laughs> we've got purple, we've got pink, we've got white, we've got yellow, we've got gold, we've got bronze. And they're gonna tell me that like, this is gonna work on every skin tone because there's every color. Uh, so if it doesn't work on you, it's your fault. You put the wrong thing on the wrong part of your face. Shiseido, what is that? <laughs> What is it? It's pretty, but what is that? Ooh, Fenty's got a mascara. Ultra black, long wear formula, stream volume, creates dramatic lash effects, sweat, humidity, and transfer resistant. 
you know, we have very sophisticated, beautiful mascara formulas that have been coming out lately, and I believe in them, and I will probably not be the one to review them for a while because I do not need to go back into my doctor and with a big giant gooey eye, okay? <laughs> what is YSL doing? We've got Top Secrets Instant Tone Up All-in-One Primer, Corrector, and Sun Protector SPF 50. But what is this packaging? This isn't YSL new. Like YSL new is like sorta, sorta affordable. It's kind of like Dior Backstage or something, but like they're not, maybe Top Secrets is like one of their sub brands. Provides a flawless skin tone while optimizing the pre-makeup routine. The pearls act instantly. I'm sure that this is lovely. Like it looks beautiful. So they've got one in lavender, one that's rosy and one that's green. This might just be Asia. Cause it's, this just seems, with the PA++++ on there, like an S, I don't know. It says coming soon on their website and retailers. So like, cool. It just doesn't look like something that you would just see going like viral in the US. You know, we're just not that concentrated on like an instant tone up full face corrector. Is it a full face? It, I mean, it has to be, right? It's a primer and it's got an SPF in it. Like it's not something that you apply to like one part of your face. You probably put it on the whole face, right? So yeah, I'm confused and intrigued, one of my favorite combinations of feelings. So, I don't know, maybe I'll buy it. The threshold is very low. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I forgot about this. When does this come out? I'm so excited. Comes out March 30th, that's day after tomorrow. Okay, so this is the new Divine Bronze collection from Abagrath because the Divine Blush collection absolutely changed my life, okay? Like, not the second one, not the one with the duos. That one was not for me but the first Divine Blush Blush Without Caution. Y'all, it was really a cultural touchstone in the world of blush, which is the world I live in. So I, woo, I wanna try these blushes. I mean, these bronzers, but I have to be honest, Naked Desire, which is the, the lightest one, looks like it's gonna be too peach for me. I'm probably gonna end up ordering the first two shades. So I'm gonna do Naked Desire and Nude Honey. But I'm kind of thinking that Nude Honey looks like my undertones more, which is interesting. I'm not really sure what the thought process is there because I think that most people who are fairer than I am want something rosy, not something peach when it comes to bronzing, you know what I mean? Quote unquote, like trying to mimic what bronze, what the sun might do to your face if you're very, very fair. You're typically going for something a little bit more red, not so yellow as that. So I'll be interested to see, but like it kind of reminds me of when I got the lightest shade in the terracotta bronzer from Guerlain that had, it has like the little sections of colors, not like just the one pan of color. And it was so wildly apricot orange, I couldn't even use it as a blush. Plus the smell, oh my God. So yeah, I, it's like one of the few things I've returned. Like I can count on maybe two hands the, the actual items I've returned since I started my channel and that was one of them. I was like, what in the hell? So yeah, I think I, I, I mean, I'm definitely going to buy these, but, oh, and they came out with a new shade in the blush. Girl, you just know I'm gonna add that to cart. You already know. And it's Divine Rose 3. Yeah, it's kind of peachy. Those will be making their way into my collection. Yes, they will. Yes, they will, Mama Pat. MAC Skin Finish Sunstruck Matte Bronzer. Y'all, if MAC could make a bronzer formula that didn't hard pan instantly, I'd be on board. But I thought that when I bought it 15 years later, <laughs> you know, they would have improved something. That formula has not changed at all. It is in the same pan. It is the exact same formula that I bought when I was 18 years old. And it still hard pans instantly. I couldn't get into it. No. Oh, sorry, that came out of my mouth before I even thought about it. Tom and I were talking about that. <laughs> like later your, friend, your friends will bring something up to you and be like, yeah, you were right about this thing that you know you told me and you're like, I, I said that out loud? I thought that that was just in my head. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> what else have I said? <laughs> yeah, so, oh boy. Nude body collection from Nude Sticks from Sophia Ritchie. So Sophia Ritchie has collaborated with Nude Sticks, which is a questionable brand to begin with. And that, you know, she's putting on, uh, this is her way. Her, she, her being a person, a person of great notoriety. She dated Scott Disick. Wow. <laughs> 
you know, gotta get your bucks. So yeah, instead of, you know, making her own skincare line, which I probably wouldn't have done much, she's too many standard deviations away from actual fame. Yeah, she's put out nude, she's, yeah, making, yeah, nude body, nude body skincare. And I, it's not even apathy. I am actively uninterested in that. Ooh, what that? New, sorry, that's what my kid always does. I didn't mean to like baby talk y'all, but like <laughs> there are certain phrases that I can only say the way that my kid says them, you know, like it, it not walking. <laughs> we call it an accent, but it's not an accent. It's like several speech impediments, but he's two, it's fine. Um, new glowish bright light hydrating sheer vegan. Oh, it's a concealer. Okay. A lightweight illuminating concealer that melts into the skin, packed with skin loving ingredients, bright light illuminates. Here's the thing with Huda though. Like, I don't understand why the packaging always looks so cheap. Like, her packaging always looks really cheap. We could try a little harder. Like, put it in a real tube. I don't know, her stuff's 20, that's $27. Like, I don't know, it just looks like drugstore to me. I got one very adamant comment being like, started out like, hey bestie, and I was like, oh, here we go. But no, I was like, hey bestie, you know, like, the girlies are really loving that Tom Ford concealer, we'd really like your input on it. Let me know. Normally it only takes like one comment like that to make a difference for me and I just add it to cart and maybe I will for, you know, the Sephora sale. I always end up buying my most ill-advised purchases during the Sephora sale. I'm always like, I don't know, you know, because I, I feel like it's my job. Like I actually should be irresponsible during the Sephora sale, so I am. But the thing about this is that, you know, the soft matte concealer from Tom Ford, which I think we're actually like circling back to where I've already been. Yeah, I think that this is where we left off last time, but melds a hydrating skincare ingredient with imperfection blurring makeup technology with hyaluronic acid for fast acting up to 12 hour hydration. Who is wearing their shine concealer for 12 hours, girl? I'm not worried about hydration. I'm worried about I need to go to sleep. And spherical powders to ensure silky smooth seamless application for comfortable non-drying wear It's $60. And that's why people want me to review it to find out if it's great because no one wants to blow $60 on a mystery. But the thing that just kept me from buying this is that they say that it's like medium coverage. I'm pretty sure that they're saying it's medium coverage. I have the traceless foundation stick and it's high coverage. So like, why am I gonna buy a concealer that has less coverage than its corresponding foundation? That's a dissonant chord in my brain. It just doesn't work, you know? So I have no idea if I'm going to buy this, but I do respect Tom Ford's approach to foundations because he doesn't put fragrances in them. He's not like, oh, I'm a luxury brand charging you eight million dollars for my products, therefore you should open this and like smell the work that I put into it, you know? And so oddly, when I was like narrowing down my collection of different foundations in terms of like what might possibly piss your skin off, I narrowed it all the way down. I was like, take out the fragrance, take out the silicones, take out the SPFs, take out the whatever. I ended up with like two foundations and one of them was the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. It's like really low key in terms of any kind of irritation that it could cause. So I respect that about his formulas. And if y'all want me to try it, I live to serve. I live to serve looks. So like, sure, let me know. I'll part with $60 for that. If that's what y'all want, let me know, okay? It's a little late. I know I'm a little late. It's fine. So yeah, oh, Burberry. Oh wait, liquid foundation with 24 hour active wear, long lasting weather protection. Good Lord in heaven, what do we really need from a foundation, okay? I just wanna look better. <laughs> I just wanna look ageless. I don't need weather protection. It's breathable lightweight formula has buildable coverage from medium to full. Evens out complexion blur, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm going through puberty, finally! Blurs the appearance of pores and leaves, uh, helps protect the skin from environmental factors, leaving it smooth with a natural matte finish. That was where they lost me. That was where they lost me. And that's why all these brands are saying that they're natural finish because as soon as they turn the corner of natural matte finish, they alienate everybody. And so it's like the chances of you buying that if it just said natural and you not liking it but not returning it, that's pretty, it's pretty good for their pockets. Whereas like, you know, they turn the corner on matte, at least they were honest. I'm not buying that. So yeah, I do still have three foundations that I'm testing right now. I have the Gucci, although Y'all saw it, I looked like Slimer from Ghostbusters. It was, it was not a good look and they really don't have a shade for me. They don't. Unless like I go in there and like the pink is not wildly pink, but the green is wildly green. Why, why wouldn't the pink be wildly pink, you know? And so I, I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to give a real review on it because like 
it looks wild. And then this I is the one I like the most out of them so far, which is the Laura Mercier. And then I tried to wear this one today, the Terracotta Latin from uh, Guerlain. And I bought this one again in zero N. Name my skin tone. Wouldn't you call it something in the ballpark of zero N, maybe one N? Either way, this is Yaller. Yaller, if you speak Southern, okay, is Yaller. Uh, but what I'm wearing today <laughs> is this, and I like it very much. I'm, I'm totally giving everything away right now, but we are going to revisit Surat very soon. I am so psyched about it. I, every time I try and do something different with my eyes lately, until the Victoria Beckham ones came today, but previous to that, I just can't make an excuse not to use the Surat quad that they sent me because it's just really good. Like, I tried to pull out a Pat McGrath palette today. Nope, ended up going with Surratt. Sorry. This is their little uh, Surreal Skin foundation wand. This is actually refillable and, you know, do I disagree with this? This little thing is like the most optimal way to put it on? I'm undecided, but this is what I'm wearing and it looks incredible. I look like an angel baby and it's making me very happy. I also, well, I also use their concealer powder. I, I used a lot of things from them today, okay? So we will be revisiting that soon and doing some more cute things on my face, so. I think that that's pretty much it. That covers where we're at so far. And let me know what y'all are thinking about for the Sephora sale. I'm gonna do the Sephora sale recommendations video, but like, just let me know where y'all are at, okay? I don't know if you recognize this every single time you watch it. I mean, sometimes it's more apparent than others, but like I am a girl alone in a room talking to a camera. <laughs> it's not a case of if you think something loud enough, I'll hear you, okay? You gotta tell me. So I'm trying to get it right for y'all and sometimes I feel like I'm just like, I don't know. You talk to yourself long enough, you start to talk back. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. <laughs> so much i'll put a video out right here that i think that you will enjoy and uh subscribe if you haven't already i'll see you in the next one Mwah. you're all adorable